So I'm Laura Broxton, I'm from the National Animal Rights Association and I'm here with my good friend Jenny Valero, who most of you may know as the owner of The Carrot's Tail, which is a vegan restaurant in Dublin. So hey Jenny, how are you getting on? Hello, I'm fine. Like good. resting today. Oh well, yeah. Or day off on Mondays, best day of the week. Oh well that's good then, that's good. <laughs> So what I wanted to ask you, first of all, um, is what began your journey into to veganism and activism? Where did it all start? Um, I, want, I want to believe that it started like a long time ago. Like I always had this idea of being a vegetarian. Way long, I didn't even know what vegan was, to be honest, but I always wanted to be a vegetarian. And after I moved to Dublin, I was actually very broke, very, very broke. And I was living on the super cheap vegetables that Lidl and Aldi always put in sales. And I was making my own food just for me. And I find out that I was feeling very comfortable about it. And I always love animals. So I was like, yes, no, I can be vegetarian, 100%. And then thanks to Cowspiracy, do I finally, I'm not quite sure why I never Google it. I just trust whatever the uh, advertising and the society tell me about dairy, that it was this happy cow having their, wanted to share their breast milk with the human for some reason. And after, after this conspiracy and what the hell, we actually make this, it seems silly, but I never did it, Google dairy industry and we find out that it's all this even worse than meat industry you know in in a way and it just broke my heart and i said no this is impossible there's there's no cheese that tastes this good for me to afford what we're doing to these animals like impossible so that, that's, that's exactly how, how it started. Like definitely after I moved to Dublin where I was totally just me because I used to cook for my whole family and my whole family has this belief that cheese makes everything better. Like Venezuela diet, I find out after going vegan, it's just a lot of cheese in anything. Even, even more than meat, actually. We eat a lot of beans and rice, but cheese is always a main. And only after I could just live on my own and do my own food and then do my research, I understood that there's a whole red of torture behind the way that we eat nowadays. And it was not something that I was, that I wanted to support anymore. And my, my vegan food was pretty good, like very delicious. I was not missing anything. And I just went for it, like, uh, and it was, it's already now almost four years, and I just sad that I never did it before, that I never actually, like, search and investigate and ask questions of what is this that I'm eating. If anything, that's all my only regret about being vegan now and how it started. She just, she started before, way long ago. I think that's how, like, a, a lot of us feel, you know, when we go vegan, it's like, why didn't we know? And, and I think it's because of all the propaganda put out by the, the dairy industry and, you know, beef industries and all that kind of stuff. You know, it doesn't make you think that it's wrong. If it's something you buy in the supermarket, it must be okay. And it's not, and it does take independent research, you know, to make the connection. So four years, congratulations. And, you know, not only have you gone vegan, but you've opened up your own vegan business. So how does yes. that come about? I know. <laughs> Sometimes I can't even believe it. And actually, like before, before we were like, yeah, vegan business. And now we feel like it's actually a very brave thing to do to be vegan nowadays. Like before I was just a vegan. Now that in a way we get so many people and, and you met so many different people, you start to believe that I'm so brave for being vegan and for stand out. Because so many people just like to judge. And I'm pretty sure you know uh, you know about that way more than I do. Because you are like way more active. You are like out there like fighting. You guys go to the street. That's something that actually I've never done. And I respect so much. What you girls do is 
insane. Like, I Thank respect you. so much. And in a way, I, I get judged, but the cafe get judged, which we took it personally. But you get to see that pressure and that criticizing, like, front row in your face. And it's kind of something brave that we do. Being vegan, and although they mock and they criticize it, we still, like, stand for it. Because we have to. Like, people will always find a way to judge it. But when you get another vegan and you see how happy they are that the movement is happening, it's like, yeah, this is worth it. All these people don't understand, they might come back. Like, they, they might understand that some way. But every time you meet a new vegan, you feel like the change is coming. So it's worth it, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I think that the carrot tail is very, very popular. Um, and it got very popular, I think, very quickly because I remember going there first. It's, it's always full. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've yet to see the place empty. The food's amazing. Were you expecting it to be such a big success so quickly? No, not at all. Like, we were not ready for the amount of work that that hit us for sure. Like we thought we were gonna be feeding three vegans or something like that. <laughs> like and and like the good part is that we or our customers are not only uh, vegans or vegetarians. So that's why that's one of the things that also surprises us. During the week we get so many people that used to be customers of the previous cafe, Cafe Moda, which did you ever heard about Cafe Moda or I've, I've heard of it, but I, I never went there before. I did hear of it, though. I, I never, like, I never thought it was such a big thing, but apparently it was a super important cafe in Red Mine. They used to do super cheap uh, bre Irish breakfast, super greasy. Well, what an Irish breakfast is. <laughs> um, they used to do it, and they, they were there 10 years. Mm. So... We got hit by a lot, and they closed pretty much until the last day. Like, we got the keys on a Wednesday, and they work until, like, about Monday. So, literally, they didn't say anything to anybody. And suddenly, this vegan cafe, bright orange, pop out. And we got hit for so many people asking still for scrambled eggs, Irish breakfast. They thought it was the same cafe. Nobody seems to notice anything but wow. even like the future is vegan in the door and during the week we still actually got a lot of those same customers which is good to see like they st uh, a few people still don't know that we're vegan and they just come for cake and they wow. have no idea yeah they have do we have we have one old man now they comes every day for cake which i don't i don't advise the amount of cake he's eating, but he comes every day. He has no idea we're vegan. I'm pretty sure. And we have well, to say well, you anything. know, I, I'm not surprised. Your cakes are amazing. So I, I'd go every day if I could as well. <laughs> but like, that's, that's, that's a thing. Like, it's just a cake. Like, just, just say that it's vegan. It's a cake. And a cake can be good or bad, vegan or not. Absolutely. Like, and, and that's what we want to actually make people understand. That it's just pancakes. It's just pesto sandwich. It's just a burger. That hopefully no animal die to make it. It's a plus that you're just putting it in your plate. And Absolutely. when we got hit by these people that didn't seem to care about it, it was amazing in a way. Very stressful as well. Our team is tiny. At the beginning, we were doing like 10 sandwiches, thinking that we were going to have some waste. Yeah. We were always sold out because, of course, we did 15 sandwiches and people were just going through that door so fast. They were like, oh, we are the cafe that never has food for people. <laughs> <laughs> it was like insane. Brunch was a big, big surprise for us as well. And it was just a, a good thing, like a good thing to see, but very stressful and a challenge for sure like yeah I can imagine that it's like um full full on pressure very very busy and not only you know do, do you run a, a vegan restaurant and lots of food and everything 
you also run a zero waste shop. So how did that come about and how did you get interested in zero waste? Uh, well, I think after you go vegan, you starting to connect a lot of dots and you, you just want to make uh, not, not hurt the planet as much as you can. And you get into zero waste because you also start to see how the whole plastic and microplastics and the, the waste, the amount of waste that humans create every day. And you just don't want to be part of the same. And we decide that we want to be the place that had the both world, like zero waste and 100% vegan. Uh, now, sadly, at the moment, one of the things that actually hit us uh, after the corona is that our zero waste shop didn't work, like didn't survive the whole thing, which has been a struggle. Like nobody, nobody has uh, actually seems to have any problem with it. But personally, for me and Sebastian, it's been like our main focus was always try to create this shop that could feed vegan and teach people that they don't need that much plastic to survive. But our zero waste shop got a big hit, and for now it's actually stopped. We're still doing vegan. We actually add a retail now. But and we taking care that the products are recyclable and a lot of, of our steel products are 100% compostable in the cafe. But the zero waste shop is something that didn't survive. But still, is something that a lot of people don't 100% embrace. They prefer what is easy and what is cheap. Mm -hmm. And having an Aldi or a little uh, so close to us, um, it, it didn't took off sadly we still are a zero waste cafe in that way all our takeaway uh, products are compostable we explain that to people just put it in your compostable bin don't put it in your recyclable if it's dirty it doesn't recycle we try to educate as much as we can but but well, i but, hope maybe one day it can, it, it can come back when things get back to to sort of the new normal i guess but you're still doing absolutely great work even if you're you know telling everyone that's buying your your food about it it's helped put that in their minds to think along those lines. So that's still fantastic. Thank and I, what I wanted to, to ask you, uh, as a person of color who moved over to Dublin, how have you experienced Ireland in terms of racism? And is racism something that vegans and activists need to focus on in the vegan community? Um, yes. Vegans and non-vegans and everything. Like, Personally, I believe that in 2020, that we're still talking about racism is stupid. Like, I can't believe that we have gone so advanced in so many things as a species, as humans, and we're still having these situations. There's still people that believe that they're better than others for their color of their skin. It's something that for me has no sense. Like, I have no tolerance to it. Um, about Ireland, um, is is different. Like I feel like personally, the the cases of racism or intolerance that I personally have lived is a bit more about about my my accent, more about some people be like, can can I just talk with with the manager? And in their head, their manager is something an Irish person that they're gonna understand their <laughs> their problem better than me. Um, of course, because I don't speak English, so how could you understand? Like, um, in the cafe, actually, a lot of people don't know I own 50% of it. And obviously, I'm in, the, I'm in the kitchen and I'm always like, my worst kitchen clothes, I have my net, I'm looking like a wrecked. And sometimes I'm in the front and I'm helping Sebastian with the teal and all that. And a lot of people just ignore me a lot of times. Like if, if I say something, they just keep talking direct to Sebastian, although I'm talking with them. Wow. Yeah. And I, I don't take it personally. Like I know that these people is just acting from ignorance. And it's, that says more about themselves than what he says about me or how I look or how, my, how I sound. 
<clears throat> so I, I actually ignore it most of the time, but it's something that is there. Now, I personally decide that it's never going to affect me. And it's just funny to see how they react when I give orders to Sebastian and Sebastian actually goes for it. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, but it's something that for me has no, no space in my life. And like I told like a lot of people is like, I, I don't understand what you're saying. It's like, okay, so it's okay, Sebastian, come here and you do it. I just literally leave it behind. That person, it has no space in my life. But Ireland, there's racism in Ireland. Mm -hmm. It's very silly when somebody says that that is not a problem, that is very far from Irish people. You, now, you can find everything, like, in everywhere. I'm pretty sure even in the United States, there's people that they are fighting for what they believe, black or white or yellow or purple. And there's good and bad everywhere. It doesn't matter. Even in Venezuela. Venezuela is a country made by mixed race. In my family, you see a blonde person, then you see a black person, then you see a curly hair, then you see a straight hair. And we are all family. They all come from the same spot because there's a mix of genes. And you still see racism in Venezuela. Like yeah. my grandmother used to tell me, you need to get married with a white man because you have to improve the race. My grandmother used to say that what? to me. Yes, yes. And it's something so common. But I think the way that we see it, it's not like racism. I never noticed how racist that comment could be until I, I left, until I saw it in, in like... Um, like like in, in a major white country, as you see in Ireland, I never noticed it. And now I think it's like, how oh, my grandmother would say that to me? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> how could I grow up with that and not notice? That little weird comment that she said to everybody. She said to my sister, which is white and straight hair and small nose. She is my sister from same mom saying that, which just look different. He said the same to her. Oh, you are white, the, the, the pretty white one. That was always as well. Like my sister was always the pretty one and I was mm, the not so much nice one. Wow, that's terrible. And I know, I know. But like, like I told you, you never notice it until I come here and I said, man, I wouldn't say, never say that to a kid. And I'm pretty sure they didn't say it for harming me or for insulting me. It's just something that is in the country as a normal thing. And that's the problem. Like in the United States, they think it's normal that a black kid, if a black kid tried to have good grades, they're like, ah, you're just like acting like a white boy. Mm. What is that? We are all the same. In, ingrained inherent racism. And, you know, from, from what you're saying, like I find it like really shocking that even in your own restaurant, you're experiencing racism um, and, and sexism. Um, I'm not seen as the owner because from from my first impressions of the carrot's tail, I I just assumed and no offense to Sebastian because I like I love him too and he's great. I thought you were the boss, <laughs> just you. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I I think I think it's a shame that like even within the vegan community that you're dealing with this kind of interactions from probably a lot of other vegans. So Ireland as a whole needs to do better vegans need to do better um and i'm sorry you've experienced all that because it's just it's not okay it's not acceptable and it, it needs to stop thank you someone no it definitely needs to stop but yeah. like i i like i told you i feel like until we don't stop talking about them we actually change or all entire culture about it like kids like white kids and kids and black kids need to grow up understanding that they are a person they are a human until we all don't understand that we are the same we are literally the same we are never gonna pass this now i feel like sexism is is a bigger issue still mm. And you also, like you say, I am the boss because I am. Sebastian is my husband, which probably helps <laughs> to control. <laughs> but 
I'm the boss because I'm the boss in the kitchen mainly. Like I'm the one making the, the food. So they trust me when I say, okay, this is this, this is that. But when Sebastian also says something, I, re I expect that other people also respect him. Not, not how, how he looks or, or who he actually owns or not. I want everybody to get respect in my cafe since the kitchen porter up to me being the head chef. And that's something that I'm expecting from everybody, from customers, from the staff. And that's something that I say to everybody. It's like, I want respect 100%. Everybody that comes to the carousel, it doesn't matter how they look, they need respect. Same in the vegan community, we're fighting for the right for animals. Because we want people to understand that they are living things. But there's no space for racist things in vegan. Like we're, we're fighting for animals. How can black people be in, not in the same thing? Like they're people. And yeah, I, I, I never understand. Because I, I, I often feel that if you're vegan, you must be like the top level of progressiveness. Exactly. But of course, I've encountered so many <laughs> vegan racists that it's just kind of totally confused me as my opinion of, of fellow vegans. And now, thankfully, most vegans aren't like that. But I've encountered a lot. And I, I definitely think that in Ireland, especially the vegan community is predominantly white yeah. um, and doesn't listen to the voices um, of black indigenous people of color or, or, or give them the opportunity um, to, to say what they need to say. Uh, and that I think is just, you know, that's what white privilege is, isn't it? It is. That's exactly what white privilege is. is. And they never going to understand. Even like for, for, um, for the cultures that are coming, like from a, uh, like for example like, like I told you from Venezuela cheese is a big thing mm. neither of my friends understand how I'm not eating cheese and not dying because <laughs> that's because that's what, what we eat like for for the white people here they, they always believe that they are ahead of the evolution so for them is is easier that that's their privilege but they don't see it they are in their own ignorance, not seeing what was the struggle of uh, maybe a, a black person say that he's vegan in their home as well. Their family won't understand. My family don't understand it either. They support me. Hmm. They're happy that the cafe is doing well. They're surprised that somebody's eating vegan as well. <laughs> but they don't understand how could I not have this big thing in their life. And they judge me at the beginning. I have to, I still have to explain to my dad. They, he asked me the other day, what do I use as a substitute for ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dad, ketchup is tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. Tomatoes are a fruit. <laughs> I'm allowed to eat tomatoes. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's true. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it, like I told you, it's, I think it's education and patience and being kind to others to understand that they they see the world in this weird that, that we don't see it when you don't see the same things than others uh fighting and being rude to the other it won't work yeah definitely Ed education and kindness is definitely key and i think that like you know what you're doing with the carrot's tail it's making not only veganism accessible but it's making other concepts like zero waste and organic and fair trade and animal rights because you know in your in your shop you also have donated a lot to, to animal sanctuaries and things mm -hmm. so i think your 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 cafe restaurant isn't just about food it's about education as well so uh, i can't wait to to visit it again soon hopefully <laughs> thank you i love that you say that that's actually what we want to do we always say that to people when they're actually interested on in learning something we we do, we explain everything. And if they ask about substitutes of meat or cheese, we try to explain the best way and always say, listen, you don't have to go 100% vegan if you don't feel prepared for it. That you make one small change, that will help. So you don't create this whole idea that, oh, I only help if I'm 100% vegan, so I'm just gonna keep eating meat every day. No, one thing, one day, it will help. And like, I think little by little, people on their own, they will understand. And what we're living now is so sad mm. because it's impossible to reach everybody. 
and there's so much hate as well and intolerance and even in the vegan community i feel that the vegan community the irish vegan community because it's the only one i've been in present i feel there's still a lot of attack between each other which mm. is silly because you will think that we are all in the same side yeah but you find out that they are very intolerant and they get very offended very fast even when you don't want to offend them and I, it's just sad to think that's just what humans are that we are all like this and that we are never gonna stop Maybe it's a bit yeah, different. Yeah, and I think it's sometimes the problem with like social media as well, because I know what you're talking social about media, in, in a lot of the sure. vegan groups. There's a lot of fighting going on there. So I think that like oh, lessons man, you do need to be learned. Group. I'm so proud of you. Oh, like you. I really don't understand how you guys deal with that sometimes. I see the comments and they're like, you guys are just Nazis. You don't let me to. It's like, my God, what people are talking about. They don't see the size of their words. It's like Yeah, yeah. It can it can um it can be a challenge sometimes moderating uh, vegan yeah. groups, um, but you know, <laughs> needs to be done. But I hope like that people, um, especially in the age of social media, can just calm down a little bit, listen to each other and always yeah. say something with kindness and understanding. And just and just I think also like like don't like like the way I say, don't take it personally. Mm. A lot of people like feel that other people is attacking you, even if they are. Don't take it like they're t like like they're doing it because you're giving power to it. Like I, I when somebody does that to me, like I remember one guy, the hitches came. He was looking to use the space of the cafe for poetry, and he was talking with Sebastian, but Sebastian had to do a coffee. So he's like, oh, this is Jenny. She will talk to you. I say, like, okay, hi, can you tell me about what's your idea? And he keep watching Sebastian, like, no, I'll wait for him. Wow, so rude. Yeah. Super rude. I was like, if, if I'm not into what you want to do, you're not going to do anything in the cafe. So you want to tell me what is it that you're going to do? Like, don't worry about Sebastian, just tell me. And he tried to explain it, but he was not interested in explaining it to me anymore. And I said, well, listen, your idea sounds lovely. I hope you're doing well with poetry, but I don't think the cartel is the place for you to do it. Like, I'm sorry. And we did it. We didn't do it because... Good, good. <laughs> because that's not the type of people I, I want. Like, if he's going to do that to me, who else is he doing it? Absolutely. And it's just, it's not acceptable. And I think... It's not acceptable. All these so, things need to be called out immediately and dealt with. So well done. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's like, and I wasn't very patient with him. It's like, listen, very good idea. I hope that your poetry is better than you are behaving at the moment. Um, but it's, it's not. This is this is not the place for for it. Thank you so much. Goodbye. And he was still interested in talking with Sebastian. And obviously, I was not. And I just let it go. And listen, he came a few more times. I say hello a few more times. And I let it go. And I hope he learns about, about it in, in his own path. But it's not going to let me to affect. Like, it's not going to affect me or feel that I, what I'm saying is not important or that, that, that it's okay for them to ignore me. I'm going to keep saying what I think. I'm going to keep fighting for being vegan. I'm going to keep being in the front of the cafe. For the people that want to hear about it. People that they don't, you have to let them go. And hopefully they don't hurt anybody. But don't take things personally. Racism is something that we have to normal, like abolish and normalize that we are people. doesn't matter how you look. Absolutely. Yeah, your blue eyes are beautiful. My brown eyes are beautiful as well. And they're both eyes. They're both human eyes. Like, it's the same. Like, for me and Sebastian, that we're so different. We are a mixed race couple, literally. It's literally the same as well. Like Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's that's you know a, a a great message to put out, and if you were to to advise people um, on going vegan, what's the one thing you'd say to people uh, that you're trying to convince to go vegan? Um, I think 
they need to find that thing that they care enough. Because I think until you don't do that mindset, like until you don't change your mindset, you don't, you might go for a vegan diet, but you might go for meat again. Like, because veganism is not just what you eat. It's, it's something that you start to understand that there's there's people, there's not people, there's human beings being abused just for you to have a steak in your plate. So I think the main thing will be research, read, and find something that personally click in with. It can be the planet, it can be animals, it can be your health. Uh, it can be anything, but it's something that that you're always going to have there when you think like, oh, halloum is so delicious. That that won't matter anymore. Because a lot of people is like, I, I, you don't know what halloum is. I, I've eaten halloum. I make this decision. And I had, like, you've never had a vegan halloum, but I had a real halloum. And I still make the decision because there's, there's bigger stuff. People think that you're eating a vegan sandwich and thinking, oh, I hope this will be a steak. You don't. You're just eating a delicious vegan sandwich. So I think you have to do like a personal change research for sure, 100%. Because also jumping to veganism without not knowing what it is, is a mistake. That's when people don't eat enough uh, fiber, don't eat enough carbs, they don't eat enough protein, and it can be dangerous. So just just research and and understand you will make a good decision if you go vegan though a hundred percent that's probably the best decision i've done and i want to everybody to do it the same because i know they're gonna feel like that like yeah, being vegan is the, best. <laughs> the best and nowadays there's a substitute for everything you're not gonna miss anything yeah very like, very well said very well said and i agree 100 percent and yeah. before i let you go Tell, tell everyone where they can find the Carrot's Tail and what are your opening days and hours? Perfect. So the Carrot's Tail, we are in Rad Mines. We are in 192 Lower Rad Mines Road. We are a very big cafe, a very orange cafe. <laughs> At the moment, we are working from Wednesday to Sunday, from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., collection only. Uh, we are not in any of the platforms yet. Hopefully by the future we will, but at the moment, collection only. And um, yeah, it's just like prepare for comfort vegan food. A lot of deep fried chicken, <laughs> a lot of cheese. And, and yeah, that, that's what we are. We just want to feed people and feel like, they're not missing anything because they're not. We have cake, we have hot chocolate, coffee, like yeah, a pretty you've, much you've normal cafe. Absolutely cafe. everything. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely everything. And I highly recommend everybody to check them out because it's one of my favorite places and oh, I can't wait you. to get there again soon. But thank you so much, Jenny, for chatting oh, with me thank today. You. And I hope I'll see you soon. Yes, me too. Like I can't wait to actually go back to whatever normal it is. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I feel a little safer with, with all this, it, with everything, with the corona and with all, with everything that's happening. I really, I really feel very sad about people that is suffering for, just for ignorance and also society not be able to let all this behind us. But listen, we keep, we're still a young species, so we, I hope this change soon and and we can go back to be a peace, peaceful place. Me too, definitely. Like, let's not lose hope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's the message. Don't lose hope. <laughs> yeah.